I'm Leo Walder for Kit Guru, and the news of the day, certainly the month, very possibly the year, is NVIDIA GTX 1080. Uh, the Pascal gaming graphics card has launched, and you're reading, hopefully, the review on Kit Guru. And while I'm yakking at you, you'll be seeing various graphs, things popping up on screen that will tempt you to go off to the website. Because 1080 is uh, a monster, it's the king, it's the best graphics card that we've seen possible ever yes ever actually it's just the best graphics card ever uh which is a huge claim absolutely ginormous uh 10 days ago i was at the briefing in uh, austin texas when jensen uh, from nvidia did the launch of 1080 and also 1070 but to a lesser extent and he did that in front of 103 journals from all around the world and also a bunch of the uh, public who'd won a competition to go along to this thing and there was lots of whooping and yaying and it was all fab and groovy uh, now at that time jensen was light on certain details obviously in this full review you're seeing everything uh, but he gave the basics. Now, at the time, I have to confess I was sceptical. What we saw on the screen in front of us was impressive because we saw Pascal running at epic clock speeds, past 2 gigahertz, which was just totally insane. Uh, the card is meant to boost to 1.7 gigahertz, and the one he had on the screen was 2.1. As you will see in uh, Zardon's review on Kit Guru, uh, our own sample has run past 2 gigahertz consistently. He's got a little video clip of it as well, 2.05 rings a bell. So, mega, mega clock speed. Well, that's obviously something, uh, but in addition, low temperatures. Now, the Founders Day card that uh, is reviewed here, and also that Jensen was showing, uh, which has got this angular design that people have been commenting on, and it's got a vapor chamber cooler and such like. Uh, it was running in the mid 60s Celsius. In fact, Jensen was saying to the audience it ran 63 earlier. Thanks to you people in this room, it's running 65 now. It was a warm room. And after Jensen said that, I noticed the aircon came on to drop the temperature a little. Uh, so uh, enough packed bodies in one hall raises the temp noticeably. I'm not surprised. It was a bit sticky in there. Nonetheless, mid 60s on air, even vapor chamber, running to past 2 gigahertz, 2.1 gigahertz. It's just unprecedented territory. So we saw that and the next day we journalists came back uh, and we, we played with the systems and there were 10, 12, maybe 15 systems uh, powering various games, although we weren't allowed to use fraps and such like to get frame rates. But we played games, they were fab and groovy. But the thing is, if you play games with a 980 or a Titan, they're fab and groovy. Playing with a 1080, it's just kind of more fab. It's not woomph. Uh, on the other hand, their VR demos were truly impressive. Uh, photos uh, on Kit Guru showing uh, one of their systems with three 1080s, but if you look closely, you'll see that the machines on the show had two in SLI. The VR machine that was running their Funhouse demo, three cards, but the third card was doing physics only. The bridge covers the main two cards, the third card's on its own. And that physics card is pretty much flat out, I was told, doing physics. There's a lot of physics in Funhouse. Uh, it does seem like the most crazy overkill system for a bit of fun, but by goodness me, it's great. Uh, chucking balls around and popping balloons and hitting things and such like. But the power, the hardware driving that system is just unbelievable. One of the other features that was mentioned was uh, audio, which uh, uh, it was described as being like ray tracing for sound. Uh, it's not enough to simply know the sound's over there and it's coming off a hard surface. You also have to know how it then bounces off that over there and it reflects around the room and how many paths you have for the sound. Ray tracing is a complete swine to do for um, hardware. It takes a colossal amount of effort and the options, uh, the permutations, uh, they go up exponentially. With each bounce, it's more and more and more. This audio sounds like it's more of the same. I was told that to do proper audio in VR, because it's very important to get the proper positioning, you might potentially need another 1080 just to drive audio. So you could well have four 1080s, two in SLI doing your graphics if you're talking 4K, realistically one for 1080. Uh, but for uh, 4K, two would be very nice, and one for physics, and one for audio, which is uh, just bah, makes you wonder. Anyway, rewind. So Jensen did his presentation. He put these figures up, and uh, hopefully you'll see a table on the screen now, which showed GT uh, X 980 Maxwell versus Pascal. And the truth it was Pascal did not look that brilliant. Uh, Maxwell's got 2048 CUDA cores. Pascal's got 2560, 25% more. That's great. But considering the massive die shrink they've done, this 60 nanometer FinFET, you have to say to yourself, what, you only get a quarter more? Well, this is, this, is, this is hardly trying. What are you playing at, chaps? Uh, you get a load more clock speed, true, 
uh, you get as a result uh, far more in the way of uh, your teraflops. This is all to the good. 1080 on paper, yeah, it looks okay. Um, can't deny it. And the, this is the cynic in me. I'm watching the boss of NVIDIA walking around, and I have to say, he didn't stop smiling. And the fanboys in the audience were hooting and roaring, and you're waiting for the, the trickery. You, you know they've cherry-picked a graphics card to show off. It's obviously a good one. Of course it is. You know they've been through a million demos, and they picked the demos that work best. Of course they have. You know the graphs on the screen where it says, relative to 980, this beats everything hollow by a huge margin. And you see VR, and you think, well, we haven't got any benchmarks for VR worthy of the name. So I don't know what I'm looking at. I'm not seeing frame rates. So I think, hmm, I'm skeptical. And then, as promised, the next day, they coughed up a sample of uh, 1080 for me to bring back to the UK to hand on to Zardom. Uh, who's done the reviews in that card. So I am in the bizarre position of having carried across the Atlantic a 1080 in the box and passed it on still sealed and not actually having used it myself. Really weird, but I did play their 1080s. So I have not personally run any benchmarks in this card. And seeing Zardon's review, I am, I'm blown away. I'm genuinely blown away because 1080 is exactly as good as Nvidia told us it would be. I was waiting for some gotcha, some slip, some... Uh, no. And the thing is, NVIDIA has built 1080 Pascal to use GDDR5X, or rather they have released this card with GDDR5X would be more to the point. Uh, this was memory I did not think was yet available. I thought Micron was sampling 5X, but no, here we are. We've got memory, 10 gigabit memory, and that gives, them, gives NVIDIA a bunch more bandwidth. We know, obviously, that NVIDIA wants to use HBM2 with Pascal. We know, undeniably, that it's going to happen on the desktop, just not now, because Pascal, uh, HBM2 is not available. When it comes, that is going to be a monster. The bandwidth is going to go... Whoosh. Right now, they had to use GDDR5X to get any sort of bandwidth that was usable. GDDR5 on 1070, which is about the only thing we know about 1070 and the fact it's got fewer flops and 8 gigabytes of GDDR5, that's about all we know. So 5x on, on 1080, uh, they had to have that memory to get the bandwidth, they've got it, this is good. Now, the briefings that we had strongly suggest that actually 5x wasn't enough in itself. 1080 can do so much, they had to do a number of other clever things, one of which includes compression, Zardon explains all this in his review, and they achieved levels of efficiency that are really, really impressive. What it means is the graphics card isn't spending wasting time sending data back and forth that it doesn't need. It's compressed up front, less work to do, you get more benefit on screen. Similar to the rendering when you've got multi-screen setups where the screens at the side are skewed, a bit like a projector with Keystone. They've sorted that out, or so it seems. I mean, we need to give out a good hammering to make doubly sure. At the moment, it looks like they've really done a properly good job of straightening up your displays. Uh, with VR, you get the thing of two lenses and you have a circle and you have to correct it because it's all, all wrong, frankly. And they've done it by dividing it into four triangles per side, eight in total. Uh, they could do it more if they wanted, but the benefits are uh, reduced. So it's a way of cutting out uh, the, per the periphery, that would be the word. And again, that looks highly uh, positive. The point is that they're reducing wasted work and they're increasing the benefit. Um, my guess is, this is my guess, is that NVIDIA was essentially forced to do this because they simply didn't have the bandwidth available to do all the nonsense that otherwise they would have been doing. They've cut down the waste, and as far as I can see, out of necessity, they've gone down this path, and it appears to have worked brilliantly. Absolutely brilliantly. The result... If you want a gaming graphics card and you've got the money, you buy a 1080 right now. That's just... It. Forget Titan X, forget 980's multiple. Their Nvidia's claims about 1080 beats a pair of 980's in SLR, it beats Titan, it's all true. Uh, I was fairly confident you'd pick certain benchmarks and things and you'd find a bit of swings and roundabouts. Right now, one 1080, that's the answer to whatever question you might have, provided you've got the money. The money is significant. That at the moment is the only black mark we can put against 1080 is it's expensive. Furthermore, NVIDIA's done this thing where they've got this Founders Day edition, uh, which is their own reference design. We don't hear reference design anymore, we hear Founders Day edition. This angular aluminium vapor chambery thing, that's the card you'll buy at launch because that's the card that's available. It's more expensive than a regular card, which is hard to get your head around. But this is how it is. 
Uh, the angular design, you may or may not like it. It appears to be as efficient as heck and work like a champ. Absolutely amazing. So in time, and I'm guessing by in time, we're talking a week or two, partners will bring out cards. They'll have alternate coolers. They'll do clever stuff with, presumably with voltages and such like as per usual. We'll see these overclocking utilities such as the EVGA uh, utility in beta that was used in the review released to us by NVIDIA. And that's an avenue that they're obviously gonna go down. But right now, the reference Founders Day design is the thing, it works, and that is the answer. Interestingly, this basically kicks uh, anybody who's got stock of 980 and Titan and such like badly, because unless they drop the price of 980 by a significant margin, and I'm thinking at least 100 pounds in the UK, maybe 150, 980 is completely unappealing. Even though 980 remains a very good graphics card, 1080 just makes it look silly. Uh, what Nvidia has done with 1080 is breathtaking. The change in the fabrication process, the 60 nanometer FinFET is clearly massively significant. Uh, they've made other changes which are very clever. Matching it with GDDR5X is also significant. But the fabrication process is surely what has led them to run all those transistors at that massive clock speed at that low temperature. Uh, now this gives us a small amount of hope because AMD has Polaris coming along reasonably soon and Polaris is going to use a very similar process as far as we understand. Um, it would seem that AMD is going to be shooting for the mid-range I don't think they have a prayer in the 1080 territory, although if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It would look to me as though AMD with Polaris is gonna be going into the mid-range, the area where people typically buy graphics cards, the 200, 250 pound mark, because 1080, I'm gonna say it again, it wins, 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 and it costs. That's the only complaint we can level against it. It's got one power connector for crying out loud. If you, 300 watt system draw with a 1080 going at full jet, it's outrageous and brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So I'd like to say here and now, I, Leo Waldock, apologize for even thinking that we were having the wall pulled over our eyes at the briefing, uh, because everything Jensen promised about the 1080 turns out to be completely true, gobsmacked, blown away, and there we have it. That's my take on 1080. I'm Leo Waldock for Kick Guru.